Welcome back to my masterclass on checkmating your opponent. Today we are going through the second fundamental checkmate that you need to know, which is called Anderson's mate. Now, we're going to start by looking at the theoretical definition of Anderson's mate. Then we'll look at three examples together. And in the end, I'll give you three more examples for you to try by yourself. Now let's start with what Anderson's mate actually is. Anderson's mate is the position in front of you where you have a pawn or it could also be a bishop theoretically, which covers a very important square, in this case h8, and a rook or queen slides up to that square and delivers checkmate. Now, of course, this can appear in various different ways and in various different positions and in, in various different combinations, which is why I think the best way to fully grasp this mating idea is to look at it in different practical games, real games, which is why now we are going to go through three examples together of real game examples of when Anderson's mate was used to end the game. Here is example one. We have the white pieces. This was a game from 1919, and it's your move. What do you play here using Anderson's mate to end the game? The move is h takes g7, and when you start to study these mates, like Anderson's mate, you will realize that you know when your rook has the ability to slide over, you really want your pawn here, and by connecting the dots, this will lead you to finding these moves, like h takes g7, the king has to move, and now you slide your rook over and deliver Anderson's mate with the pawn defending the rook. Moving on to example number two, it is white to move here, and the one difference that should be noted is that we have a bishop here and not a pawn, which is why I want to make it perfectly clear that Anderson's mate is not necessarily a pawn. You can also use a bishop uh, as long as you have this property where a rook can slide over using the defense of the bishop and give checkmate. And that is exactly what we can do here, starting with a queen sacrifice. Queen takes h7, king takes, and now rook h6 and rook h8. And this is the position of Anderson's mate, as we've already seen, a bishop, or more typically a pawn, guarding the rook, delivering checkmate. Now for the third example, I want to go a little bit before the mate actually occurred, just to show you a little bit about how you can maybe set it up. So here, notice you're playing with the black pieces, you have this very strong bishop, and so here a very strong move would be f takes g2, not only to win the pawn, I would even argue that's the less important fact, but more importantly, you're securing a very nice bishop, and with the help of these checkmates like Anderson's mate, that could definitely lead to some very nice combinations, and this is exactly what happens in this game. The game continued h4, rook d8, h5, and here is the big tactical blow, queen c5. And in the game, white took the queen. Uh, if they don't take, let's say they move the rook, then you could even just take on h5 and maybe deliver Anderson's mate on h1, for example. So they took, but this is not much better because of rook d1, king moves to h2, and rook h1, Anderson's mate, with the help of the pawn, supporting the rook, delivering checkmate. So this was also nice to just see how you can set this up. If you ever have the opportunity to land a guarded pawn on g2, that is something you should definitely try to aim for. And then how can you use that? You want to get your rooks to the open file and try to set up some checkmating attack. Now, aside from the three examples that we went through together, I want to end the video with three more positions for you to try uh, so you can widen your experience with this mate. So in a real game situation, you're probably going to have a better chance of finding Anderson's mate. So this is position number one, and it is less forcing. Not everything is with checks, but it does still utilize Anderson's mate in one way. So how can you use Anderson's mate here to end the game with the white pieces? And just a little hint, you do want to act rather quickly because h2 and h1, uh, or maybe even taking here, uh, basically, black has some nice counterplay here, but because of the weakened king, you indeed can deliver checkmate, so how do you do it? And now for position two, we're playing with the black pieces. How can you use Anderson's mate in this position to end the game? And just as a little hint, here is the pawn that you're going to, of course, use Anderson's mate with, but you need to open up the position in some way to allow you to use your major pieces and actually deliver the mate. 
All right, so give this one a try. If you need some help, then of course, comment down below. And also, if you have the solution, comment down below if you want to check it. And let's go to the final example, which is right around here. Again, you're playing with the black pieces. You can see black has a absolutely tremendous attack in this position. And after this move, rook d1, you once again can utilize Anderson's mate in this position to end the game very forcingly and very beautifully. So as always, pause the video, give this one a try as well, and comment down below your ideas. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully this really helped you widen your ideas of Anderson's mate, not only with the theoretical definition, but more importantly, with the practical applications of Anderson's mate. Subscribe if you're new around here for more content like this. Check out my other videos in this very playlist of checkmating patterns, and I will see you next time. Peace out.